So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Hello, everyone. We're so glad you've joined us today here on Terry Mize Ministries program. <laughs> we are thrilled you've taken the time to join us and honored that you've given us the opportunity to share with you some things that we think will be not only a benefit to you, but also help a whole lot of other people along with it also. So we're going to talk to you today about some things that are that we focus on every year around this time of year and things that Terry has done for 52 years of ministry around the world and give you an update, give you vision, and then invite you to participate with us in what we're about to do to help uh, people that are very vulnerable and people that are in need every year. And a, a focus that we try to do and set off here, here we are the second week and uh, we're about two weeks away uh, from no December 1st. And we're oh, really? going gonna to launch into the world uh, with helping orphans and um, widows, if need be, around the world in the many different orphanages that we help and participate with in them. And they're almost on every continent. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and so we're excited about that and just wanted to give you uh, an update, like I said, and then prepare you to understand what's happening. And at least you can pray and join with us and believe that we're going to find favor and great, great opportunity to help these children. Children all over the world. And you know, it's not just uh, the orphans. We major on orphans because right, right. the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us, plus the Old Testament and New Testament, and New Testament tell yes. us that we must, we, the body of Christ, right. we must be about the master's, master's business, business and we must support widows and orphans. That's not a just a noble idea we came up with. No, that's, that's a right. commandment from the Very Word of God, Old Testament scriptural. and New. And yes. uh, it, it's even something that Christians... I know people get mad when I say this, that, that people don't have a choice. But a lot of times, you know, I, I say people don't even have a choice. God just told us to do it. If That's you're a right. Christian, you will do it. That's so right. Like if you're a Christian, you are commissioned to do missions. You don't have a choice That's about right. that. That's you right. can't opt out of the system and say, well, I don't, I don't participate in missions. No, Jesus said you no, have to. Right. He said that's what he's about. That's what you're about. But it's not just orphans. We uh, we help, uh, like you said with us, we help uh, uh, people in uh, in need and disaster relief. Yes. You know, here yes. a few months ago we had Hurricane Laura. That's it hit right. Lake Charles, Louisiana, so badly, That's and we right. helped people there. And then, and then, just with forty days later, or something, forty-four days later, uh, Hurricane Delta hit the yeah, same yeah. place. Yes. And uh, and so, you know, we we reach out and help wherever That's the right. help's needed. That's right. And Renee, we, we always this surprises people. But we give a hundred percent of what's given. Now, I know I know people don't always believe that because. The, the big charitable organizations don't do that yeah, right. uh, because they have to take their overhead out of it. Right. Red Cross, Salvation Army, United Way, right. whatever. Uh, they uh, And they're allowed to do that by law. Yes. Just like we're allowed to do it by law. You're allowed to take so much percent right. uh, out of your donations for your to pay your office staff or to pay your mail outs or your advertising or or your expenses, or your travel. Uh, but we don't do that. We've never, never, never done that. Our, our organization is called JMICF, after my late wife. Jackie's in heaven today, but we call it Jackie Mize International Children's, Children's Foundation. Foundation. And with that foundation, we actually can get into uh, some countries right. that I can't get into as a missionary. Like when there's an earthquake somewhere, a tornado somewhere, exactly. a hurricane somewhere, a, exactly. a cyclone in other parts of the world, a, a horrible, horrible tragedy somewhere, a tsunami. Uh, a lot of times if I try to get in there as a missionary and say, I'm Terry Mize Ministries, I want to go preach to these people. The government just says, no, you can't come in. But That's if right. I say, hey, I'm, I'm the CEO of a, of a, of a nonprofit uh, organization, of a, of a humanitarian aid foundation, and I've got money to come in and help your people, they say, come in, come in, come in. And so we use JMICF 
as a as an avenue to get into a country. That's right. Not just to help the people financially, but then get in there and preach to them, pray for them, tell them about Jesus, and help them spiritually. So, uh, so we use JMICF as a as a witnessing tool, as well as a humanitarian aid and in, in help for widows and orphans and so on and so forth. So, and we don't say a lot about it. I mean, after all these right. years, we've not we don't push it, we don't promote it, we don't That's try right. to. Uh, get out there and beat the drum to get money. Uh, we just rarely mention it and talk about it once in a while. And our partners love us and they know we do it. So they right. help us. Uh, but uh, here we are, like you said, we're, we're pushing December 1st. Right. And uh, December 1st actually is what they're calling Giving Day. I don't know who thought that up. But that, <laughs> it's on the calendar as Giving Day. Right. And so maybe that'd just be a good push for you and a good thing for you to say, hey, we're going to get involved and we're going to hook up and we're going to give a, a missions right. offering, a, a humanitarian aid offering, a help offering of some kind. Now, we have our regular normal ministry, Terry Mize Ministries, that, uh, that we have partners and need partners and always welcome new partners and are always asking God for new partners. And we appreciate our partners and pray for them every day. Mm -hmm. But then we have the humanitarian aid, the foundation. And so you can give to either one of those. You can give to both of them. You can give to TMM, Terry Mize Ministries, or to JMICF. And, and to finish my point, we never, never, never take uh, money out of JMICF mm -hmm. to pay the expenses. We we cover that out of TMM. Now, obviously in TMM, we have to take money out to pay the salaries and the right. expenses and right. things like that. Right. But we never do it out of JMICF. We just, if the, when we have expenses in JMICF, we take money out of TMM and cover that. So every dime, every dime, every dime, every dime that you give through our, our humanitarian aid situation, through Jackie Mizer International Children's Foundation, 100% of it, all 10 cents of that dime or every 100 cents of that dollar or whatever you give uh, goes directly to where you send it, where you tell us you want to put it. And well, so we're, we're, we're happy about yes, that. Not, not many yes. organizations can do that. And a lot of people just don't believe th that you can do it. But we, that's what we do. Well, we wanted to let you know about this here uh, before we take a break. But just let you know that, that we really uh, were – uh, sort of chided by some of our members last year to please start letting everybody know ahead of time and <laughs> give them a date <laughs> and give them a date and let them know when we're going to start giving. And we'd like to really begin to have the money, uh, you know, ready to go out. And Psalm 65 says that God crowns the year with his bounty and in all his paths are abundance. And so as we close out one year and, and start another, it's like to me that Terry, like the top of the clock, you know, from 10 to 12 and 1 to 2, that if God's going to crown the year, then it would be November and December and January and February, <laughs> yeah. that he would crown the year with his bounty. And that here we are closing out 1, 2020, which I think everybody's happy to get out of, <laughs> and then going into 2021 and believing God that there's going to be a celebratory, victorious win over the year 2020. And we're going to do that by uh, giving to orphans anyway. Yes, we are. We're going to do that by blessing children around the world anyway. And we're going to see God do amazing things just like he has every year. You know, Renee, I've been supporting orphans for so many right. decades. Yeah. You know, and uh, most all of my ministry. Right. Almost every country I go to and right. have gone to in these 52 right. years Somebody will take me to show me orphanages. Exactly. And, no, uh, that's right. And, and I get the the tour and the exposure. And, uh, and boy, I tell you, I see them all kinds. I see right. some that are not so good, and some that are really sharp, and some that are not so clean, some that are super clean. And, and I get I get to see lots lots of right. them and lots of right. examples. And uh, but, but I've helped them for so many, many years. And then some have just been our orphanages, mm -hmm. you know, that we just mm -hmm. totally supported ourselves. And then we've helped lots of others that aren't, right. aren't ours when we help. We're partners. Yes. Right. And then some that, that are government run that we can't have any say so in. But we help them at Christmas time and, and, and any time they have a real right. need or something. But I was going to say, we've helped them for so many years that some of these kids that I used to know when they were <laughs> that big. That's right. You know, I mean, right after they were born, some of right. them, I was there. Uh, and then to where they've grown up, gone to school, we put them through school, yeah. you know, and then put them through higher school and higher education. Right, right. And many of them now are, are married and parents and grandparents and many of them in the ministry and many right. of them in business, many of them in politics and just, just all kind of things. So it's exciting to see 
what becomes of them and, and, and where they go in their in their lives. No, and, that's right. And knowing that we put not only support into them and kept them clothed and educated and right, fed right. and medical attention, but but that we put Jesus in their life. We've absolutely right. ministered the, the love of God to them and, and the word people. of God to them and the <laughs> knowledge of God yes. to where they literally have grown up Christians, many of them in non-Christian lands, exactly, uh, and, and have been able to use their faith right. and to, to, to live on planet Earth and to, to right. prosper on planet Earth and to be healed and blessed. And I remember one time decades ago, um, we had uh, just taken over an orphanage in India. And um, and so I was there and, and of course they wanted to perform for me and mm -hmm. so they had a play and uh, so uh, Jackie and I went in to watch the play and mm -hmm. they were going to put on this production for us and uh, and they all came out, Renee, and I found out, I mean this was decades and decades ago, I didn't know this then, but I, I found it's very common now, but they all came out in, in white face. Oh wow. And these little Indian kids, little brown and skin kids yeah, right. of varying degrees of lightness and darkness, but they had white makeup on oh their my. face. And so here's Mary and Jesus and Joseph, and here's the wise man, and here's whatever else. And so after it was over, I, I called the directors over, and, and I said, what's the deal with the with the white makeup? What's the deal with the white face? They said, oh, we always do that uh, because we, we show that, you know, we show white people. We show Jesus is white, and and, and Mary's wow. white and Joseph is white and everybody else is white. And I wow. said, and I got real stern. And I grabbed my I grabbed my director. And I said, don't you ever, ever do that again. I said, you get that garbage off their face and you right. let them come out in whatever color God made them. <laughs> That's right. And you teach them that, that to be proud of who they are, That's right. to be satisfied Absolutely. with who they are, to be settled with who they are. That The Bible says they're fearfully and wonderfully, wonderfully made. made. And don't you ever, ever make them feel inferior right. due to color right. or anything else, any other reason. Exactly. And you, you make them feel uh, who they are in Christ Jesus, That's that right. they're more than conquerors, that they're heirs and joint heirs of Jesus Christ, that they're that, th that they're prosperous, that they're healthy, that they're blessed. And you teach them the word of God that I'm sending over to you to teach. Right. And I tell you, it just really got away with me that, uh, that they would they would do that and subjugate right. those kids to making them feel less. And these weren't white people that were doing it. These no. were Indian people that were Indian doing it. Indian people. You know, yeah. these were Indian nationals that, well, that were doing this, but they just had that it, mindset that we got to we, yeah, we, we got to be white. And I said, Jesus was from Israel. He wasn't white. You know, <laughs> Mary right. wasn't white. Joe right. Joseph wasn't white. That's right. You know, they're from Israel. I mean, it, look at those Israelis, that beautiful olive skin oh, yeah. uh, complexion. Right. You know, and I've had people argue with me over the years and, well, you got a white Jesus or, or our Jesus is black. And I don't care what color your Jesus is. He, <laughs> he doesn't bother me. He's the son yeah. of God and he can be every color and uh, in the universe. Yeah. So they have the rainbow. People made the rainbow a bad deal these days, but it's still God's promise. The, it, the, it's so exciting to realize that, you know, the, the, the scripture probably in one of the songs we were raised on as children in church was that Jesus loves the little children, of all the, the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious Absolutely. in his sight. And then, you know, the, it, we, we taught every child in, in children's church to sing, Jesus loves me, this I know. And then, That's of my course, favorite song. Yes. And we were constantly... Uh, being reminded of John 3.16, when you're raised in a good missionary church, your perspective of the world is much, much broader than people that are not in a, in a church or even in a business that are given that. And even if you're going to school and getting an education, you don't have the perspective like the church does to be giving and caring oh, and absolutely. building absolutely. and sharing with people. I was thinking about when you were talking about just in the six years we've been married and the orphanages that I've been with you um, to in Romania, um, you know, many of these governments uh, stopped uh, baby orphan uh, baby adoptions uh, foreign adoptions yeah foreign adoptions and uh, especially in communist countries and a lot of other countries of the world they do not want their their uh, children adopted out to other countries they want to keep them within their country and Terry has gone in there and even with a couple of the orphanages that he's had to deal with now for many decades I guess at least three decades uh, has been um, where they could not let the children leave. The, if they let them go, then they would just be put back out on the streets. Right. And they could not be adopted.
adopted by anyone outside of the country. And so they've had to raise these children from the age of birth <laughs> till sure. now they're in, like Terry said, they're in their late teens, early 20s, and were raised in the orphanage. Uh, we have paid for their schooling. We have bought them clothing. We have done seen every, them to adulthood. Yeah, and we've seen them, you know, grow into, and a couple of them got married. Well, and couple, uh, yeah. had one, I think one at least has a has a baby now, beautiful little boy, and so there's there's that nurturing side of ministry that starts from birth till they're out there on their own that um, we have just refused to not do for them because they the enemy wanted to take advantage of every disadvantage that well, they absolutely. had. Absolutely. And it's only been the gospel that, and that's just one facet of it. But like in Mozambique last year and different ones, they didn't even have a water well. Right. I mean, we went in and did some things in India and in Mozambique and um, Madagascar. Madagascar. We did some things that they didn't even have the basic necessities of life. And so everything you that you do. Clean water is a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Everything that you give in to uh, Jackie Mai's International Children's Foundation, every bit of that money goes in a way that that not just, you know, the local church here in America where you're going to buy carpet and you're going to do, uh, you're going to put in new air conditioning and you're going to go out, out there in the and do an outreach in your city to go into the apartment complex and do things like this. This is basic stuff that has to be done for these children around the world. If they're ever going to believe the gospel, they're going to have to believe that God is good. Absolutely. And they're going to have to believe that God cares about everything about them, not just the fact that they're plopped down here on the planet, and, and but such, that their life means something. That's such a big revelation to train people that God's a good God. No, that's right. And that God loves them. Yes. And that God treats them equal. Boy, that's right. And that God wants them to prosper. They don't have no concept They have no uh, concept of, of, of prosperity. Of prosperity or of prospering. Right. And that God wants them healed. They actually deserve healing, Renee. Yes. And they deserve prosperity. Right, right. And, uh, and of course, I preach on that a lot. And I teach them that. And teach. Uh, I, I, remember, I remember sitting with some of my older girls. We, we have what we call older girls because mm -hmm. when they're 18 years old, when they're an orphan, right. in most countries, but I'm talking particularly now about Romania, uh, when they hit 18, right. then the government puts them out on the street. They're no right. longer can be raised it's by like the state. It's like foster care here in America. Yeah. They're, they're put out of foster care and they have, they're on their own. Yeah, but they're, they're literally they on their prepared. 18th birthday instead of that being a happy day. Right. Then they're put on the street. And that night they don't have any place to live. Mm. They don't have any food to eat. They don't yeah. have anything but the clothes on their back. They've never owned anything, never right. had anything, never been responsible for anything. The government just treats them horrible. Not our orphans, but I mean the the, the state-run orphanages. Right. And so we've taken in so many of these, quote, older girls, these 18-year-old girls. Right. And we, we've we've built new houses. I mean, from scratch, built new houses. We've taken other new construction and leased them. And then we've taken others where I just had to go rent some apartments. Yeah. And just put and some just girls, put in, girls in, in apartments. And the apartments and so they have somewhere we, to and go. And then we try to keep them for a year right. and try to support them for a year and try, and try to get them jobs. Right. And, and I remember one time I was meeting with a bunch of, I think my son Lynn was with me and, and, uh, we were we were uh, in one of the apartments I had rented, and uh, Pastor Terry Maris from Del Rio, Texas, was with me, and and uh, uh, April and Lynn from the New Zealand, who right. who were on our staff at right. the time in, right. in Romania, and and so I was talking to these girls, trying to encourage them, trying to give them a a, a foot, a, a leg yeah. up, a, yes. you know, yes. and, and and so I was talking to them, about having a dream. To get a vision, get a dream. You've got to have a dream. You can be anything you want to be. You know, you, you know, God will help you and, and we'll help you. And, and so I'm just really talking up the have a dream thing. And uh, this one little girl, teenage, 18 year old girl, she raised her hand and she said, uh, Dr. Terry. And I said, yes, sweetie, what is it? And she said, I have a dream. And I said, that's wonderful, honey. What, what is your dream? And she said, I'm, I'm a really good cleaner. And she said, I, my dream is to be a cleaning lady. And that's as high as she could think. Nothing right. wrong being a cleaning lady, right. but that's as high as she could think. And so I said to her, I said, honey, that's a wonderful dream. I said, I said, cleaning ladies are wonderful, and that's a that's wonderful right. profession and Very an honest necessary. way to make a living. But I said, let's kick your dream up just a little bit. Yeah. I said, you can own the company right. 
that hires cleaning ladies. You can be the head lady. Right. You can be the boss. You can be in charge. And then you can hire cleaning ladies, and they'll go out and clean, and, and, and it'll be your business. Well, that just boggled her brain yeah. to think that, whoa. You know, well, but we, we try to, you know, bring, but they right. deserve to be healed. They deserve to be prosperous. They deserve to be taken care of, ministered exactly. to, loved on. And so that that's, that's what we've done all these decades and all these years. And, 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 of course, still doing it. And so we were talking about December 1st is Giving Tuesday. So prepare for that. Build up for That's that. Right. That's and, right. And uh, uh, here in TMM and Terry Mines Ministries, you know, we, we invite you to partner with us and come in with us as we preach the gospel around the world and get people healed and saved and blessed and blind eyes open, deaf ears unstopped, preach the word, teach the pastors, train the pastors in the word. But then also in JMICF where we help orphans and help widows and help those that are in need and help disaster relief. That's right. And all that kind of stuff that you can partner with us in doing that. So prepare to do it. Prepare now. And, uh, of course, you can give early. You can give today. That'd be wonderful. But, but you know, in two weeks is, is Giving Tuesday. So yeah, we can make 1st. that a big deal. You know, we're, we're preparing for right. 2021. Yes. You know, we're looking at our calendar for 2021. We're looking at right. being in Malta. We're looking at being in Romania. We're looking at being in, in Pakistan in a great open air crusade. We're, we're looking at being in Mexico. We're looking at being in different nations around the world. So we're already gearing up for that. And I, I've right. got my passport out and shined up and ready to go. <laughs> uh, and, and so uh, believe God with us as our partners. You help us go around the Amen. world. And, uh, and we're excited about that. But, you know, John, the Apostle John, uh, in, in the very end of the Bible, in Third John, he was over 90 years old when he wrote this. Mm -hmm. He said, Beloved, talking to Christians, Beloved, I pray or I wish, but I desire above all things, all things, that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. That's right. And you know, God gave me that scripture so many years ago, Renee, when I was just a young missionary, and he said, They deserve to prosper. Yes. They deserve to be healed. Because of what Jesus did. And I tell you, as I've gone around the world all these 52 years, I, I, I've gone in villages, I've gone in tribes, I've gone in jungles, I've gone in places. And when I see a sick person, a, a crippled person, a, a diseased person, a, a poor person, a beggar on the street, I always, my heart always says they deserve to be healed because of what Jesus did. That Jesus paid for that. Jesus shed blood for them. Jesus died for them. If they if they don't get their healing, get their salvation, if they don't get ministered to, right. then Jesus wasted his blood. He wasted his life. He, his, his blood means nothing to them. So to bring them in and, and get them healed, to get them saved, to get them blessed. You know, if Jesus hung on the cross and died for them, yet they don't get saved and go to hell, Jesus did nothing for them. Right. And it's wasted. And so our job is to get the gospel to them. And, and, and it's always pricked my heart to say they deserve healing. They deserve prosperity. They don't need to be poor. They need to be prosperous. They don't need to be sick. They need to be healed. And I always look at them always around the world as they deserve what Jesus, not because of what they've done, oh, but because God. of what Jesus did. They deserve what Jesus did. Well, and, it's a, and this is where this phrase, I think, is very helpful. When you realize what the message that we're actually taking to the world is both one for the physical and one for the spiritual. It's a dual relationship based on the blood and the body of the yes. Lord Jesus yes. Christ. When you take that bread, that signifies healing for the body. When you drink that juice, that means it's forgiveness for the sins and healing of the soul. So it's spiritual. It's the it's the unseen realm of even of a human being. And then it's the seen realm on the physical body. Absolutely. And so we want to take that message to everybody around the world. And what better way to do it is when you can work with. And, and I was going to say many of these orphanages that 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 Terry has worked with through the years are very small orphanages. Some of them have like 120 kids. Even a larger one may have like a couple hundred kids. But most of them have like 35, 45 kids in them. Sure. And they don't have anybody else helping them. We They are out of the way, unknown places mm -hmm. <laughs> of the world that nobody even cares about other than the handful of people that either are working there with those children uh, and a just a, a neighborhood of people that may know that there's an orphanage right, there, right. like the, the ones in India that I had worked with for sure. a while. You know, it's so important for us as the people of God to know that we are blessed, that we have, we have a way to bless people. And many other countries of the world don't have a system 
where they want to give or love on other people. America does that better than anybody. Oh, no, absolutely. Christians do it better than Christian anybody. Americans. <laughs> Jesus, James 1.27 right. says pure religion and undefiled, undefiled before God and the Father is this. Yeah. Is this right that you that you minister to the widows yeah, and orphans? You visit the fatherless. That you visit the fatherless That's in right. their affliction, and in their affliction, huh? and and minister to them and lift them up. Right. That that's that's pure religion to God. That's right. And before we go, let me give you uh, this website: Orphan One. Orphan just one. just the word Orphan One dot com. Dot com. Yes, and you can find out more about what we're doing, more about JMICF, more about giving right. to orphans. <laughs> And uh, we're about out of time. Yeah, you can Giving all... Tuesday's coming up. December and we want to 1st. invite you to partner with us and hook up with us in Jesus' name. Put it on your calendar. And you know, you can always find us at terrymines.com. And as we go around the country and go around the world and get ready and prepare for this season of life here in the 21st century, 2020, going into 2021, don't ever forget that you are more, more than, than a conqueror. Bye-bye. Conqueror.